Hi, this is Mike Langlois, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about distraction, attention, and um, a creature from Minecraft, a game, video game, and the creature's name is the Creeper. And hopefully in a second you'll kind of understand how these all hang together. But first let me talk with you a little bit about a scenario that people often come in and I hear causes a lot of struggles at home, and that is that the kiddo will be working at the computer, um, doing something, we're not quite sure what, and then the parents will come over and ask what you're doing, and then there will be a, usually a huge fight. And the huge fight will be involving someone got caught playing a video game, or someone's not doing their homework, or someone's upset because they got interrupted, or someone's upset because they, they weren't trusted. And um, to back up a little bit, I want us to talk a little about what distraction actually is. And, and in fact, distraction is, from the point of view of evolution, an important thing to have the ability to, to do, to be distracted. For example, if you're walking off of the sidewalk and you're talking very intently with a friend and you don't have the ability to be distracted by a car horn, you're not going to know that a cab's about to hit you and you're going to end up getting hurt or maybe killed. So distraction is actually not in and of itself a bad thing, but distraction in terms of education and in therapy often has um, kind of a bad rap. So first off, I wanted to kind of set the record straight that distraction is actually evolutionarily an adaptation and we don't want to say it's bad just uh, across the board. So that's one thing that I think is important to mention. The other though is to really take a look at how much we can really pay attention at any given time. And when we do pay attention, um, if you think about it, at any given second, um, the, some of the research suggests that we're having 11 point something million bits of information. So over 11 million bits of information are kind of flying through our brain at, at any given time. And of those 11 million bits, we're only conscious of about 40 bits. So 40 bits out of 11 million bits is not a big amount. It's a very small portion of the big picture. And unfortunately when adults and kids are you know, talking with each other or arguing with each other, part of the problem is that what adults think the 40 most important bits are and what kids think the 40 most important bits are are often not the same. So there is a difference between what a kid thinks is important and what an adult thinks is important. And if you're of the mindset that whatever the adult thinks is important is what's important and that's the end of the subject, then you really should stop the video here because I'm not going to really have much to say that's going to make a, a real impact on you or that you're going to agree with. But if you're somebody that tends to believe that we do struggle in our society a little with adultism, that we do have to struggle a little bit with the idea that adults aren't always right and that kids aren't always wrong and that sometimes maybe it's a difference of opinion not one person being better or smarter or righter than the other then then maybe you should listen a little more so from the point of view of the kid that's about to get distracted that's where Minecraft's video game comes in and in Minecraft there's this villain or monster in the game called the creeper and I have a picture here of a creeper for you this is a creeper and creepers come along in Minecraft when you're mining or you're crafting or doing whatever you need to be doing and they kinda creep up behind you without you knowing they're there and then they explode and when they explode a few things happen one is you usually die and another is anything that you may have been crafting or mining or holding on to in your inventory gets scattered all over the place. And so when you die, you end up back wherever you started, and you have about five minutes to usually rush to whatever part of the world the creeper blew you up at. Um, and if you don't get there in time, everything's gone. So I usually use that metaphor for parents and for kids to understand what's happening um, from the inside out when a kiddo is working on the computer and a parent comes up behind them and says what are you doing? Are you doing your homework? Are you supposed to be doing that? Those sorts of things are the equivalent of a creeper kind of coming up behind the kid when they're concentrating and boom everything can get lost and by everything what I mean is that 
when we are distracted from a task, there is evidence to suggest that it can take us up to a half an hour to get back on task again. So that's a lot of time that can get wasted if we're distracted for uh, even a few seconds. And that's why I think the metaphor of the creeper coming up behind you and blowing things up so that you lose everything isn't too far off the mark. Now, am I saying that we shouldn't ever be talking with kids when they're in front of the computer? Absolutely not. Sometimes that's really important. What I am saying is that a lot of times parents and adults in general tend to think that whatever their idea or their question or their motivation is is the most important thing. And so I just want parents to kind of take a step back and think about when you're about to ask your kiddo what they're doing. Is it that important for you to know in that moment that it's worth disrupting their um, concentration for a half an hour? So yes, it could be that they're playing a game, but it could be that they're doing their homework. And is it that compelling for you to know that you're willing to disrupt them so that it could be a half an hour before they get back on to task again? And if you frequently are asking them what they're doing, then you want to keep that in mind when you then later start to say that they take forever doing their homework because in fact they probably are taking longer doing their homework because you do keep interrupting them. Now to be fair uh, for any kids that are watching this video and I do have some that do, um, one of the things you need to know is in terms of building that sort of trust with your parent you're going to need to keep your side of the street clean. And by that I mean a lot of times when kids tell me, please tell my parents not to interrupt me, that they can trust me on the computer, I'm doing my homework. Um, I say, yeah, but underneath the homework window, is there a window where you're playing a video game, like Minecraft or Bejeweled or something else? And usually they say, yeah, there, there is. So I think if you are a kid and you're listening to this and you want your parents to be able to trust you more, then the best way that you can go forward to facilitate that trust is to really be clear with them when you're uh, doing a game and when you're not and to not have windows underneath because I have to tell you if you're a kid and you're watching this your parents do the same thing at work where they may have multiple windows and they have something underneath the window that is at work in case the boss comes by we all do that and in fact that's one of the main reasons we have windows so that we can multitask and put one over the other when we need one to be more important or when we need to give the appearance of one being more important. So it's a, a game that's about as old as Windows and we all know that people do it so try not to do it. And if you're a parent and you are wanting your kid to be more responsible with homework and wanting your kid to be more responsible with screen time then what I would suggest is that you try to trust them a little bit more and try to let them have the opportunity to make their own mistakes and learn how to use their own time that someday they're not going to have you to monitor them and someday they're going to have to have learned how to internalize that ability to kind of do what they need to do on on the computer when they need to do it so in closing don't be a creeper if possible try not to kind of sneak up on the, your kid and check to see what they're doing and if you're a kid try not to be doing something that encourages suspicion and mistrust in your parent a lot of times if the two of you can actually talk about how you're using the videos and how you're using screens you're going to actually have a lot more um, progress in terms of achieving digital literacy. And that's really what we want parents and kids to be doing, is having conversations about digital literacy and increasing their ability to have digital literacy and be good digital citizens. So until next time, watch out for Creepers, and I um, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks a lot. I'm Mike Langlois, LICSW. Take care.